with Nanny Rabina taking all of your questions and sleep questions with kids. I mean, these come up all the time. They're not going anywhere. This is Jennifer. Jennifer says, what to do, what should I do when your baby or toddler takes uh, crappy naps at daycare? So they're not getting the right nap in at daycare. Uh, she can't really control that. She's not there. No, she's not there. What can she do? What she can do is try and better the situation when he comes home. Now, this is pure guesswork. I'm going to guess that when she picks him up, she's like, I haven't seen him all day. So mm -hmm. her, they have mommy and daddy time and they have play time. And then that escalates up to, you know, gets a little late, maybe 7 o'clock, maybe 7.30. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is if he hasn't had a good nap, he most likely needs to be sleeping at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Now, believe it or not, a couple of nights of sleeping at six o'clock could actually roll over to the next day, make him for better naps. Because what's happening is he's becoming overtired with the naps. He becomes overtired at bedtime. He's never catching up with the sleep. Mm -hmm. Once he catches up by a few early nights, he actually may nap better the next day. And you may be able to move it back to, you know, 7, 7.30 bedtime. So what about the, the issue? Because most parents would say, if you go to bed at six, are you going to be up at 4 a.m.? Not nice. Nine times out of ten, no. It okay. can actually happen, though it really does depend on how much sleep your, your baby or your toddler needs. Right. The other thing she wants to look at is, because we don't have the age, is if it's, a, you know, a toddler two and a half years old, it could be outgrowing that now. Yeah. That now is just becoming, like, waiting for his coping mechanisms to kick in because he may be outgrowing that nap but again he still needs to go to bed earlier mm. and by going to bed earlier yeah and if he gets up at six o'clock and he slept all night what's the big deal oh <laughs> you see I don't, say that. I don't mind because i'm up but i try to get up early to have time to myself so, so i understand how that would be an issue. a short window that that may happen until they sort their sleep out yeah. but generally they'll fall back to sleep and yeah. Wake at a reasonable time. Okay, yeah. good stuff. Uh, I have a viewer named Holly who says she's a two-year-old who is just fixated and, and has a fear of bowel movements. Uh, we've talked about this before. So she had one during a nap, had a meltdown, thinking she left a mess in her bed. She also had two bowel movements in the bathtub and now will not have a bath without a tantrum. So this is becoming an issue. Yes, and you know what? There is a, there's actually a word for children that actually do fear this. Don't even ask me. It's like 26 letters long. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember. There is actually a condition where people can, children, sorry, can fear that. Mm -hmm. My guess is, and I've actually had this situation where I actually had one of my charges in the bath mm -hmm. and suddenly went hysterical and she'd done a poop. So, mm -hmm. you know, how came the submarine and mm -hmm. she saw it, went hysterical, needed to get out the bathtub mm -hmm. and her reaction was quite shocking. Yeah. And, you know, I got her out the bathtub and, and we talked about what it just, it's okay, so calm her down. What I would suggest to Holly is, this is not everybody's cup of tea, but it does help. Yeah. She takes the baby, the child, to the bathroom with her, yeah. and she allows her to witness herself go into the bathroom mm -hmm. for number two. Well, she every gets parent up. goes through that anyway. Yeah, yeah, you don't have a whole lot of privacy. They hang anyway. out, they want to watch everything. Yeah. And then, you know what? You've got to show them what's just happened down the toilet. You talk yeah. about it, you wash your hands, and you've got to encourage her. Let her sit on the potty in the powder room. I've done it too, Tracy. I'm, I think I've told you before that when I looked after a little guy, and, you know, I would show him. This was just leading up to potty training. Mm -hmm. Tell everybody in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> Nanny Rubina just had a big poo. Uh, yeah. anybody, anybody that would listen, you know, they, they're not very subtle. There are no yeah, secrets. Yeah. So, you know, get ready because that's likely going to happen. Right. But for them to overcome that fear by, sh it's like a case of show and tell, right? Yes. You've got to show them what you're ha what's happening yes. and it, may, it you gives them more comfort. You have to normalize the bowel movement there for them. There you go. You've wrapped it up. You are very words. committed to your work, my friend. <laughs>